Shalom everyone. Thanks for joining us. We're going to talk as uh, we uh, talked about and agreed last from last week about the <coughs> preparation for the high holidays. The laws of Teshuvah and we talk about the Shofar. So we prepare ourselves for this special, special day. Um, Last week, I think we discussed a little bit about our great rabbis, our, our role models, how they got excited when they um, heard even the name of Tishrei, the name of Elul. They took it seriously. It's not just another day on the calendar. Not, it's not just a month on the calendar. Rav Shimshon Pincus wrote that everything that we have in life due to God's infinite kindness, the fact that we can see, that we can hear, that our extremities function as they should, each morsel of food and drop of water that we received is due to his kindness. The question is if we really appreciate that. We take things for granted. We get used to it. I'm breathing now. I'm walking. Till you don't get hurt in the leg, you don't appreciate walking. You get corona, God forbid, you can smell. You don't appreciate. Then you say, wow, just yesterday I could smell the food. I don't smell anything now. Sometimes things happen in the world in order to awaken some people. You don't appreciate. It's for your own good. We each receive billions of such kindness throughout our lives. This is what we remark in our prayer of Nishmat, quote, even in our mouth, if our mouth uh, would be filled with song and our tongue uh, whipping back and forth like, like its waves, we still not manage to thank you sufficiently for a billion um, of kindness you have performed for us. This, this is why it's so important to say in the morning, Mudani, Hashem, that I'm alive. I can go to work. I can see. I can smell. There was a guy here on Shabbat, he lost, he lost his, his wife, I think it was on Friday. He took her to the hospital, he just told me this yesterday. He took her to the hospital. She was hospitalized. The very next morning, he passed away. He came to the hospital for a visit because she complained about some pain. And he came back home alone. He's a mourner now. We don't think about this kind of thing. We are sure that we live till tomorrow. Because we are used to receive everything for free and without any effort in our part, it is difficult for us to accept the fact that everything depends on God's judgment and that anyone, any one of us might be judged unfavorably for the coming year. What coming year? We are in. We are now in Tafshin Ayin Tafshin Pei Bet, which is English calendar 2022. There's any guarantee everybody will reach 2023? No guarantee. That is why Rambam wrote, as cited above that the Torah commands us to believe that God has the ability to punish us and decides our faith according to our deeds. The person who becomes frightened at the very mention that Elul has arrived is a person with strong discipline, faith and beliefs. Where is the person who ignores the dangers of God's judgment is lacking in his basic level of belief in God himself. 
It's a wake-up call this month. Thank God that the rabbis are waking up to give us 40 days. Get ready before Yom Kippur. We're talking about not this Shabbat, next Shabbat, Sunday. The Sunday after next Shabbat, it's the Rosh Chodesh Elul. Right? It's a 40 days before Yom Kippur. That's the reason that we are talking about this kind of stuff. Next week, Be'ezrat Hashem, Be'ezrat Hashem, God will help, we will have another class as a preparation for Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. Are we really ready? And what's the meaning of being ready? Oh, to buy the food for the simanim, the signs for Rosh Hashanah. Everyone get excited. Apple and honey and singing, dip the apple in the honey, say the bracha loud and clear. You familiar with this song? All the, all the kids. Shana tova umetuka. It's a great song. Wow, it's fun. It's a gathering, everybody gathered, family. We eat dates and we eat uh, you know, um, apple dipped in honey and other signs. It's all beautiful. It's the meaning of it. Why we do that? Just for the sake of eating? The Magid Dubna in the Sefer Ohel Yaakov used. A poignant parable, poignant parable. I'm sure I'm not reading it right. P o i g n a n t, like said something said, right? Poignant, poignant. Pognant? Poignant. Yeah. Okay, it's it's, it's, uh, it's something parable. Parable that it's a fable that bring home the difference between the period of Elul and the rest of the year. Once a person moved to a new neighborhood, where no one know him. He chose a synagogue, found a vacant uh, place in the corner, and made it uh, his own. Of course, he did not speak to the neighbors during the prayers, but even afterward, he avoided making small talk with them. On occasion, he would approach the Gabai. Who is the Gabai? Give me another name for Gabai. Gabai is the guy that in charge in the shul to give you aliyah, you read now, you do this, you give you all the honor to, to, to do some yeah. stuff in the show. It's a gabai. This is, it, it looks like this is the rabbi assistant, you know, but we call it the gabai. So we approach only the gabai to notify him of an upcoming yard site. His parents passed away, want to give him the date so he can invite him, so that he could invite, in, uh, be invited to read from the Torah and to lead the prayers. But other than that, he attempted to remain aloof from the congregation, alone by himself. Nevertheless, he could not completely hide his uh, gregarious personality. And little by little, he became involved in community affairs. We see that all the time. Finally, the day came when the community proposed election for a new synagogue board. By this time, this man was uh, by no means uh, a newcomer, and he announced his wishes to be nominated as a board member. From that day on, he switched gears. He flashed a smile to everyone uh, whenever he entered the synagogue. Wherever he went, he greeted each one warmly and asked about each one's welfare. Until now, he did not need anyone to know him other than the Gabai. But now he knew that every vote counts. His success in the upcoming elections depended on his relationship with every potential voter. Makes sense, right? It's human nature for many people. During the rest of the year, so this is the fable. How is that connected to us? Can you have any idea? What is it to do this story with us? Our connection to God. Huh? Connection to God. Close to when? 
The election day. When is the election day? Month of Elul. Yom Kippur, Rosh Hashanah. You've been elected. For good, for bad, for health. God forbid the opposite. For Parnassah. For marriage, not married. You've been elected. It's not only your close friends, and not only the Gabbai. You need to treat a lot of mitzvot around you, not to say hello from a distance. During the rest of the year, we are contented with making sure that we fulfill the major mitzvot that identify us as Torah Jews, such as, uh, give me give me main mitzvot you're familiar with. <coughs> hello, is anybody in the room? Praying. What is it? Praying. Praying, what else? Blessings. Blessings, Shabbat. Shabbat observing, right? Keeping kosher and family purity. It's the big mitzvot. And regular synagogue attendance. The other, less important, right? Mitzvot are ignored for the most part. People rarely pay much attention to whatever they are speaking or listening to the Shonara. Whether they, wa whether they wash their hands properly before meals or engage in conversation during the prayers. During the month of Elul, however, we know that we are coming up to for elections, to be included in the book of life. We realize that we will need every vote. Vote? Who's going to vote for you? You're on your own. No one will help you. Not your wife, not your husband, not your kids. Not your money, nothing. It's you looking at the list. Johnny Cohen, Social Security, 537-22318. I gotta start to see all the list of the good and the bad deeds he did. So who's gonna vote for you? You tell me. The good angels that you good angel that? You created with all the From? You Very good, Tada. This is your uh, voters, your supporters. Your defense. We realize that we will need every vote, meaning we need every single mitzvah possible. We need every extra word of Torah study, every coin donated to charity, every ounce of care to perform the mitzvot and to avoid transgression, transgressing sin. One vote, one vote might tip the scale to a year of happiness and tranquility, or, God forbid, to a year that that will uh, will be quite the opposite. Therefore, during Elul, we gather as many mitzvot as we find available, hoping to weigh down the scale to the side of merit. ברוך אתה אדוני אלוהינו מלך העולם שהכל נהיה בדברו. How many mitzvot you did now when you said amen? One. How many mitzvot I did? One. Big mistake. This is what I said out loud. What do you think? I'm a sucker. I'm stupid. Taking advantage. How many mitzvot? Tell me. How many? Thirteen. More than that. I tell you. Baruch ata onai elokeinu melech haolam shehakol nihya bidvaro. Nine already. Every word counts. Plus, everybody here that heard amen, said amen. Let's say thirteen. Add it. Twenty-two. Twenty-two mitzvot in three seconds. Can you imagine that? so easy. More voters for me. You got one, which is good. You didn't have it before. Even, even a mitzvah has levels. You could say, Amen. Amen! Or not to say it properly. If you want to use it as, uh, don't try to simplify it. Every mitzvah you do, or every avera, you create a persecutor or a defender. It's an angel. Imagine 
uh, big angel strong from mitzvah you did with good kavana, good intention, with all your might, with your heart, you make effort. Ah, this is what the somo, you know the somo in Japan. This is a big one. It's going to help us on the scale. Or mitzvah that you say because you have to say it because you were there accidentally. It's still a mitzvah. We want to have only somos on the scales. So every mitzvah we do, we have to do with joy. Even a bracha, simple bracha, you can gain mitzvot easily. We have to do, this is an opportunity, free, free. It didn't cost me anything. So how many mitzvot you did? One. one. How many I did? 22. There's one in this room that have 23 mitzvot. Even more than me. Who is it? Thank you, Daniel. Because <laughs> Daniel is the reason he brought it. He got more than everyone. See if it's worth it. I didn't even ask him. So maybe the mitzvah is even greater because he thought about me and Hashem have his own calculation to give you more and more. If I would ask him for a tea, it will be less. You understand how it goes? Very easy to do mitzvot, very easy. Okay. What about the 40 days? And why 40? Why not 30, 10, 5, 1? What's up with this number 40? When you meet 40 in the Tanakh, can you, can you help me out? Hmm? 40 years in Midbar. What else? 40 days, Moshe Rabbeinu. Who? Moshe. Sure. Right. Any other 40 you were... Uh, Yonah was in the belly for 40 days. Yonah, it's connected to Yonah, not for the few days, for a few days, but 40 days, that was his announcement in Nineveh. Nineveh. In 40 days, yeah. right, yeah. Hashem will destroy the place. Again, 40 and 40. Give me another 40 days that you remember. The very beginning of Genesis. You heard about the flood? <laughs> flood. Why 40? Why not 35? Why not 42? What's up with this 40? And there's another 40 that's connected to every woman. And man. The 40 weeks of pregnancy? You know, I didn't think about that. But there's 40, 40 weeks? Okay. There's 40 days that connecting to babies. We'll see it. Again, the number 40. Sammy, can you see the condition? Try it 10 seconds. Our sages designated the 40 days from Rosh Hashanah, which is in a week and a half from today, remember? Can you tell me what day is it on the English calendar? Someone can look it up really quickly. Our sages designated the 40 days from Rosh Hashanah, from Rosh Chodesh, I'm sorry. You have to press it 10 seconds. Hold it 10 seconds. Don't let go. From Rosh Chodesh Elul through Yom Kippur for repenting and raising our level in serving God. Did you look it up? August 28th. August 28th. So this August 28th. The counting of the 40 days starts. What we do today is a preparation. So what should we do? From August 28th. And I'm telling you, you don't have to wait till August 28th. From now, from today. Corresponding to the final 40 days that Moshe Rabbeinu spent on top of Mount Sinai, during which God displayed his infinite capacities for forgiving and reconciliation. As Rashi explained in his commentary on the book of Shemot, 3311. How many times Moshe Rabbeinu was on the Mount of Sinai for the Israelite? How many times? Three times. Three times. Remember, people think it's only two. Two tablets. First tablet broke them, 40 days. Second time he went to plead before God. Yeah. And then he got permission to get another one. And then the third time he got the second tablet and he came down on Yom Kippur. Yeah. So it's 120 days total. 
from the time they received the Torah for the first time, the Sivan six, seven of six, the six of Sivan. Moshe Rabbeinu spent, as Rashi says, three periods of 40 days on top of Mount Sinai. Also, when Yonah, the prophet, came to the city of Nineveh, he proclaimed, quote, Nineveh is about to be destroyed in 40 days. There obviously is something significant about the period of 40, 40 days, and its connection to God's judgment and repentance. So what's, what's, the, what's hidden behind the number 40? What's up with this number? What Hashem wants to teach us? How we can take advantage of it? All that and more we'll see Bezat Hashem next. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I saw the look at Sammy's face. He was very angry. <laughs> Relax. The Maharal of Prague wrote a number of times that 40 days period signifies a fundamental change in this world. The concept appears several times in the Talmud. For example, our sages taught, tracted Nida 30a, that it takes 40 days from the moment of conception until unborn infinite is basically formed. Did you know that? Hmm? After 40 days, it's already considered a human being. It's, 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 it's in a shama. This is why abortions are, it's, it's actually killing. It's forbidden. <clears throat> this concurs with modern medicine marking six weeks from conception as the transition point from the embryo to fetus. Did I say it right? Fetus? Fetus. Also, our sages taught in Menachot 99b that an unborn child receives its soul 40 days after conception. 40 days, days after. after conception. Likewise, when God decided to destroy the world through the great flood, he stated that he would make it rain continuously for 40 days and 40 nights. Rashi in his commentary to Bereshit 7.4 explained that this period corresponded to the 40 days of formation of fetus, demonstrating that this destruction was brought about since the immoral practices of the people forced God to bother forming the fetuses of illegitimate, illegitimate children. It was so bad prior to the flood that people were corrupted. Women cheated, husband cheated. They influenced even the animals. Everyone was corrupted back then. You think that, uh, for example, gay marriage is uh, something new? It's not new. Commentator says that back then they give ketubah between themselves. Men gave to another guy to live with him. It's not you. It's before the flood. They gave him ketubah, a document of uh, marriage. When Hashem says this is abomination, it's against even the seven universal laws. When Hashem commanded Adam to be with Eve, it says Adam. And Eve, Eve and Adam, that's it. Meaning not with her brother, not with her sister, not with the son, not with the uncle. Not with the Talmud brings all the, what's not? Men, wife, that's it. You have some uh, tendency in you that you can control, you have to deal with that. It's still abomination. It's still against God's will. And it's a sign for you that you came to this world to rectify. It's hard. You're probably born with these desires because you came from, I don't know, 100 years ago, 200, as a Gilgul, reincarnation to fix. So I have this tendency. 
It's still on you. The neshama is full of it. You have came here to rectify that. So anything that we know, we have tendency toward, and it's against God's will, according to the Torah, this is for us to fix. You might be, I don't know, you're a cheater, you're a liar, you're a thief, you're whatever. If it's not approved by the Torah, or the, or the seven universal laws, you have to fix. Questions? Okay, let's continue. Rambam wrote <coughs> in Ilchot Teshuvah, the laws of Teshuvah, 2, 4, chapter 2, Halacha 4, that the formula for proper repenting is for the penitent, penitent is the one that do Teshuvah, penitent, to change his name and move to a new location as if to express, quote, I'm a new person. I'm no longer the one who performed those sinful deeds. Likewise, Rabbeinu Yonah of Geroni wrote in Yesod HaTeshuvah, the foundation of Teshuvah, that someone, quote, who has sinned and now wishes to return to his place under God's wings and to repent should cast away the burden of all his sins and crimes, making himself as if he had been born only this day, without any merits of sins. He should consider this day to be a new beginning for him and start now to forgo a path of righteousness from which he will never stray. No, go away. I hear many people many times talking about Teshuvah. Rabbi, I want to do Teshuvah. I did Teshuvah. Give me the process. I give them the four steps. It's easy. Change your ways. And, and, and regret of what you did, like plans to say, Hashem, I promise I'm not going to do it again. That's it. Did it kosher for now? You're eating kosher. And Hashem will test you if you're strong with that. People want to do teshuva. For example, uh, uh, it's new. Okay? It's new, modesty. They want to be modest. They decide they want to have a change. Beautiful. Hashem loves modest people. Look at the, I don't know, uh, Facebook. They're still there. <laughs> it's not modest, but you said you want to do tzniut. But still, the pictures that you uploaded are not tzniut. I don't understand why a woman goes with no... She showed her shoulder. Someone said, one shoulder. We know you have a shoulder. <laughs> we have no doubt you have a shoulder. Why have to shoulder everybody? This is basic tzniut. Men as well. It's new. Modesty. I had the other day, <clears throat> that was a few months ago, a question. It was a Shalom Bayit. Before I left Israel. Shalom Bayit. What's the problem? He still keep the picture of his ex. He has an album. And he has pictures from the past. So they ask me, what should I do? Should I take them out of the album? They're married, they have kids. I'm not going to give you too many signs anymore. He says, what do you mean? I'm with my wife, all is good. This is just pictures from five, ten years ago. Who cares? It's in the album, just, you know. What do you think should be? Should he remove the pictures? Or keep it there. He's already married. Why are you laughing? Keep it there. It's a serious question. Keep it there. Why? Memories. Memories. Wow. Memories for whom? <laughs> for himself. For himself. From who? For whom? For himself. For himself. Mm -hmm. How is that going to do good to the marriage? To remind him of certain mistakes or lessons he learned. Oh, maybe it's not a mistake. Maybe it's not a mistake. Maybe remind him that she's better than his wife, the current wife. Maybe. Maybe. Ah, maybe. Maybe. Uh, and, and believe me, it's not the first question I get for the same issues. One of them was even having contact on Facebook, on uh, other, uh, you know, I don't know, Instagram, you can uh, write messages to each other? On what? Instagram? Messenger. Yeah. Whatever, it was Facebook and another thing I don't remember right now. They, they're still in contact and they're wishing him, I don't know, uh, Mazal Tov. Someone that he was with 
and she lives in Plano. She has her boyfriend, yes, but she's wishing him Mazal Tov. And sending him a picture from their past. It's just for memories. I'm not going to tell you what kind of a picture was it. <laughs> they didn't, I didn't want to see it. But she said it's a picture with his ex in the jacuzzi. She sent him just for Mazal Tov. Sorry for this, uh, this place to say, but it's to, I'm making a point here. This is the You're married. Finito la comedia. Everything, go to the garbage. Nothing, that's it, finish. You dedicate to your wife, that's it. And you dedicate to him. This is healthy marriage. No need memories from the past. It's not going to do any good to you. Believe me. He respect, and he did it in front of my eyes. And Baruch Hashem, ever since, it's much better. Yeah, I don't have to tell you why it's very bad and wrong. Now he knows and realizes it's only his wife. And you have issues, you have to fix it. But this is the way to do Teshuvah. Immediately, right on the spot. He understands he did wrong. He said, Rabbi, you're right. Boom, boom, dig. In the garbage. Understand? That's it. We see from this passage that Teshuvah remarks the sinner into a new person. It means actions, not just talking. Thinking about it, talking about it. Tomorrow, the next day, in the week. It's too late. It's never too late. You're still alive. Do it now. Now. Now when the Yetzirah, the evil inclination is weak. You're going to get stronger in every minute. Tomorrow is going to give you a different ideas. He's not going to let go because you are your, his prisoner. You're in captivity. He's not going to let go that easy. You know, the Yetzirah is much smarter than us, stronger than us, is more experienced over 5,700 plus years over us. But rabbis give us the remedy, the solution, the medication, and the plan how to beat this guy. Right now, all of you are sitting and studying Torah. You rejected him. Those who are watching us, those who will watch us, you send videos and encourage other people to study Torah. And by the way, I forgot, but now I remember, Hashem reminded me, I have a box of, bo box of new books. If you can take it out of here, please, the very bottom. Everybody free to take whatever you want after this class. Take home with you um, some new books. I tell you, yes, we can take it even later, it's fine. You know, it was nations that killed us and came to attack us, thank you, with a sword like Egypt, Egyptians, or the Edomite that came from Esav, as Amalek. Edom came against us as Israelites, as Jews, with a sword. Another two nations, Amon and Moab, just make us commit a sin. The first guys, Egyptian and Edomite, want to kill us, destroy. The other two, just make some Jews to commit a sin. They open the flea market, and you all know what happened with the girls of Midian just prior to the entry to the land of Israel. Which is worse, the first or the second? Edomite the Egyptian, they want to kill and destroy you, or those that want to make you commit a sin? Commit a sin. Commit a sin is worse? Why? You're absolutely right. Because the Talmud says, teach us something great. Someone that kills you, kills you from this world. But you have a share in the world to come. Someone that makes you commit a sin, you're dead in this world and in the world to come. No. Come back, maybe, maybe in the Gilgul, with Hashem kindness, and start all over again. <laughs> Much worse! This is why the Torah commands 
don't reject and don't despise the Edomite and the Mitzrim. Nonetheless, they came against you. But Amonu Moab, no, 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 no. Can remarry, they can marry, uh, intermarry with them. They cannot be part of the Jewish people. They're done. Just want to meet a scene. And by the way, it was a scene with Snoot. Modesty. Right? When the beautiful girls came and seduced the Israelite to commit a sin. 24,000 people died because of that. Modesty. On the contrary, if you support someone or you teach someone to commit a mitzvah, to do a mitzvah, you give him this world and the next world. You bring sometimes, some, you can even imagine, you tell someone, come to me to a Torah class. And eventually he comes. Or, or you listen to it. You send him a link. And he likes it. And you make him more religious. And then he decides he want to get married with you know, a religious girl. And, and, and it happens all the time. From one link, one video, one lecture, one kiddush. They, they feel the, the neshama been drawn to it. The next generation that comes from this couple, these guys, are going to be religious, all of them, thanks to one link, one beracha, one request. Please join me to a Torah class. All the mitzvot they do goes to your account as well, for generation. Can you imagine that? You can do the same with avera, with, with sins. You should be always surrounded with Torah, with beracha, and teach the people around us that's the right way study Torah keep Shabbat say bracha answer the bracha go ahead my question was the, the, the Jewish people they were not allowed to marry with the Mitzvah they were not every Gilgul I would say I can't put it in a percentage but I would say 99 point something is for that reason to rectify only if you, Hashem, bring them to this world, either to lead the generation, uh, to, or to teach, or write books, like myself, for example. <laughs> <coughs> and uh, stuff like that. So, so I have a great chachamim, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So my question is, doesn't the neshama learn from the prior experiences of the Yetzirah? Who what? So doesn't the neshama that is about to be you know, reincarnated, doesn't it learn from the previous experience of the Yetzirah to not repeat in the next life? The problem is we don't remember. Hashem created forgetfulness for a reason. You want to learn about it? You read the ways of the tzaddikim, or chot tzaddikim, there's a gate called the gate of forgetfulness. You have to start all over again. And not to focus on one or two things. You have to do everything, including fixing your own character. Okay? There's few people that remember the last Gilgul. Very, very few. People have flashes. One of the great rabbis, the Admor, I forgot his name right now, Hasidic rabbi, he said that he remembered that he used to live at the time of Beit HaMikdash, first temple. And he remember, he told his student, I remember that he was a very important person back then. And one day, you know, he was a rabbi, everybody knew him. And he committed a sin that it was supposed to bring an, an offering to the Beit HaMikdash. So what do you do? You go to Yerushalayim and you buy a sheep. Sheep or go. So he went all the way to Yerushalayim. And there's a lot of uh, sellers and merchants are selling animals and chickens and whatever. And to buy a, a korban, a sacrifice. And then the guy, oh, you're a rabbi from uh, Tel Aviv, right? Wow. Shalom Aleichem, Aleichem Shalom. You know, I came, can I buy a sheep? Maybe. Okay, I guess the rabbis, the rabbis, even great rabbis can commit a sin. Okay, so he gave him a sheep. He said, I was so embarrassed to hear that. And then he started to walk, and he says, the sheep ran away from him, and he was chasing, he was an older man, he started to chase after them. People wanted to help him, and, 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 and pursued after the sheep. It was such an embarrassment, because many recognized him. Till he get to the Kohen, he got so much embarrassment, he didn't know what to do with himself, where to hide himself. And the Kohen saw him and said, Shalom Aleichem, Rabbi. Ah. No, no, no. He came to the right place. 
He said, you know, after I finished what I did in the Beit HaMikdash, I never sin in that sin anymore. They had the luxury back then to do all that, that Beit HaMikdash. Today we don't have that. We commit the same sin over and over again. We don't care. Even we know that Hashem looking at us and we're doing the same thing. We give an excuse to ourselves. It's okay. Hashem forgiving. Questions? We see from this passage that Teshuvah remarks the sinner into a new person. For this very reason, our sages institute 40 days for the annual Teshuvah process, uh, culminating with Yom Kippur. During these 40 days, everyone is to erase his former uh, personage, the one who sinned, and to form a new being, a person who has repented and renewed his connection with God. And the Torah. And this way, we emulate the 40 days of the great flood, wiping out, wiping out uh, our old existence and the 40 days of the formation of our new existence as if we have been conceived anew. You see the connection now? You're a newborn, new baby. But take the Teshuvah seriously. No mishmash, no half-half. No yes, maybe. Maybe yes, maybe no. I'm going to start. I know people that they're studying for already 20 years. They're starting. You know, let me have a kid. I'm going to come for the tefillah. Let me start with Rosh Hashanah. And Yom Kippur. And for 20 years, he's coming only Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. It's ridiculous. Hashem has expectation from us. And I brought you this uh, example. When we have uh, a baby, you know, we have Baruch Hashem uh, grandchildren. I was in Israel. So some of them, they just start to speak. Abba, Abba, Im, Im, Abba, Abba, Abba. Ah, oh, he said Abba, he said Abba. Listen, listen. Bring with the camera, Abba. Imagine that he says after, I don't know, a month, that he won't worry. Water, water, water. Hey, what water? I think it says water, water. Give him water. Water, water, water. Imagine that he's 25 years old saying, water, 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 water. <laughs> hey there, you stupid. <laughs> yeah, for me, I'm not mocking anybody, but there's no progress here. What's happening here? <laughs> the same guy. Let me start Rosh Hashanah Yom Kippur. Let me start with the Kiddush. Let me start with me to say bracha. You're not doing me a favor or to Hashem favor, it's for you. you to make progress. You can't act like infant all your life. What a, what a, what a, it's ridiculous. Every time, make a progress. Another beracha, another tefillah, more tzedakah. Join the shul. The shul is here in the neighborhood. There's no excuses. You know exactly the way to the theater to watch a new movie. You forgot about Hashem's house in your neighborhood, which will do for you what a million movies won't do. They'll do the opposite for you. I'm telling all these things from me, for myself, first. I'm on the same level with you. Every day we're doing Teshuvah. I know better than you. I'm not just saying as a metaphor, because uh, people used to say, I really understand, I really mean it. This is all for me. I have to do the Shuvah on a daily basis. There's no guarantee for anything. Believe me, where I see it, when I see people with problems and issues they have, you won't believe it. People that have, I don't want to give you examples, you know what I'm talking about. They're so rich, they own buildings, not apartments, they own buildings. Here in Dallas, you know what I'm doing? High rises, buildings, they own. They're not happy. They're miserable. Calling me a hundred times to check the mezuzah. When I'm telling him, stop blaming the mezuzah. The mezuzah didn't do anything to you. Change your ways. They're not happy. I see simple people, they're making okay. 
they're much happier than him. Because he lost his wife, divorce, and the kid doesn't want to speak. We think, no, no, I want to be a billionaire like him. I want to be a billionaire. I told you this on Shabbat. You know how a woman make her husband millionaire? You know? How a woman make her husband millionaire? You know that? She's marrying him when he's a billionaire. Okay. The women didn't like this joke. <laughs> little by little, you lose the money. It's okay. By the way, on Shalom Bayit, when I give classes, I encourage the husbands to give their wives free on the account. Because this is your responsibility on the Ketuvah. You work, she spend the money. That's the deal. <laughs> it's not a joke. This is the deal. Hmm? If she goes to work, she's doing you a favor. Because in the Ketuvah, it's not her responsibility. You're responsible to work and provide. Give your wife free access to spend as much as she wants and offer her to spend more. I'm not joking. Holidays, <laughs> gifts, clothing, jewelry, everything. Or it's just for another class. Anyways, there's much more to talk. I plan to discuss much more and to talk about the Zohar a little bit, about Mokadusha. We have to continue this, Be'ezat Hashem, next week because we have um, uh, davening in a minute. Uh, any questions before we close this class for today? I hope you enjoy this class. I want to uh, give a blessing all those who support Ohev Israel Foundation. Some of you here, even when they have the membership monthly, they keep support from the Thai, from uh, Givis et Tzedakah, and this is a great blessing. I was able, Baruch Hashem, to do a lot of mitzvot of Tzedakah and Chesed when I was in Israel. Hashem bless you. Hashem see every actions you do, every Tzedakah, every coins that you give. And we need more and more defenders. Give to any, anyone you trust, it's fine. I can only represent for the Israel Foundation, and I want to wish that Be'ezat Hashem, everybody will be able to make a lot of money so they can give more. Mm -hmm. And you will be always on the side that gives and never take. Mm -hmm. I sometimes have to deal with families that they are embarrassed to get the food. They're embarrassed. But I know they need. The refrigerator is empty. So we have to you know, manipulate the system so they can have something. I don't wish you to be in their place ever. The kids live on water and leftovers from Shabbat all the week. On behalf of the Heavy Israel Foundation, I want to wish you a good year, a new year, from today, from now. Make efforts to get close to Hashem. Berachot, tzedakah. Any questions you have, Bebakasha, please feel free to do it. God bless you. Shalom. See you next week, same time.